What's going on, everybody? Happy Monday. Bobby Five with my man, Eric Sheetaber. We are going to be going through today NBA slate. We've got a nice slate for a Monday. Um, it's interesting because it's, you know, with Monday Night Football, you know, that you're going to see a lot. I guess you're, I guess, I guess, I, I, I'm not sure what they're going to do all year with this because Tuesday they like to have the shorter slates, but they, they, they've sort of hinted that they're really trying to avoid the football stuff um, as much as they can. I don't really know how, they, how they're going to plan on doing it because I'm looking at the schedule and it doesn't seem like that's really what's going to happen. So, Anyway, we've got a big slate tonight. Anyway, it's it's going to be a fun one. I am in Idaho. I just want to remind everybody before we get into everything that uh, I will I will be I will be posting my my core plays. Uh, I will be posting some bets. I'll be in Discord, going back and forth, answering any questions I can. But I can't build lineups here, so I don't have any early lineup builds. And I love, I know a lot of you guys appreciate that. So I'm happy to go over your lineups if you want to send them either directly to me, but preferably in, in Discord, so we can get kind of a nice little chat going. And um, that, that's the way I, I'm going to sort of handle this. I also want to say congratulations to Sheets for winning a survivor pool earlier than I've ever heard of anyone winning one. So you chopped it up and that was that was pretty awesome. And Sheets, talk a little about your weekend and then we'll jump right into uh, the NBA. Yeah. So um, uh, as as I went over last week, I mean, my survivor pool was down to two people due to, due to a very volatile season. Let's put it that way. And uh, we both took the bucks yesterday. And they lost, so last two remaining survivor just ends the pool. So we 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 chopped that up. Um, uh, pretty good. It was like two and a half Bitcoin each, which is which is great. And uh, and uh, yeah, I'm I'm glad that happened because DFS was 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 miserable yesterday as far as football goes. All my guys getting got injured, and 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 uh, guys that didn't get injured didn't do all that that great. So it was a uh, tough day DFS wise. So it's glad the survivor thing obviously more more, more than made up for it. And then I would also like to say, if I have not been clear about this over the last week, uh, after last night, it's now official F baseball. Okay. So, yep, so, yep. so that's at the end of that. I will probably not be participating in the Phillies Astros World Series um, uh, as far as, as a spectator. Uh, but uh, uh, you know what? The Yankees just got completely owned by the better team in, in completely, in complete dominating fashion from pillar to post. So. Yeah, so that, that's the way it goes. <laughs> um, yep. And this time they didn't get nobody got cheated. They just had a they were just terrible. <laughs> Astros yep. are much much better. That's the way it goes. Um, it, it's it's just right. I mean the Astros are are doing it. And it, you know what? This is I, I have like I'm like you. I haven't. I was just praying the Yankees could somehow beat knock the Astros out. That was my last real hope for the baseball season. Yeah. I cannot even bring myself to watch anything else. Although I will say go Phillies because I, I don't want the Astros taking another one. Oh. <laughs> um, oh. But all right. Um, well, we have a nice NBA game slate, a nice NBA slate, and, we, and it gets off to a good start here. Sheets, why don't you talk a little bit about this game to start off with? Because I think that there's a, I, I don't know, I I, I really feel like, uh, first of all, I love this kid Matherin, but I also feel like a, maybe this game is being a little bit lower owned than I thought it was going to be with a pretty high total. Maybe it's because of the point spread. Um, but right off the bat, I, I do kind of like this game. So I'm just kind of curious to get your thoughts. I have a couple of uh, thoughts on this game. Um, first of all, uh, James Harden looks really good. Um, there, they, they there were rumors that he looked good going into the season, and he he actually seems to look good on the court. Um, mm -hmm. And you get a good looking Harden at nine K, kind of in general. That's it's probably something you want to want to consider. I mean, he had almost I think he almost had a triple double. Um, every game so far, pretty much. He's every game. Yeah. Uh, and I, and I, and I, I like him a lot in general. Um, I also like, um, on the Indiana side, uh, I like the way that, that both, um, whatchamacallit, Halliburton and the guy you mentioned, um, uh, uh, Matthew have been playing. Yeah. Um, I like that. Now from a projection perspective, for some reason, neither of those guys are looking that great. Uh, today, I, I guess it's because Philadelphia still plays really good defense, um, and 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 and, or at least there's the impression they play really good defense. So I'm not really getting to these Indiana guys for some reason. So I have to think about that. I I, I don't really like this game all too much, and and, and it's funny you we're both kind of saying the same thing. You know, you're saying uh, you know they're going to be pretty 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 low on and unappreciated. Yeah, I mean I, I kind of don't feel like playing it either. Um, it just feels like a like the first bunch of games seem like really slow and, and and it kind of picks up later in the slate. I think of anything, I would probably play play Harden. 
Um, I, I, Embiid looks to be the best overall raw points guy. On the, well, at least is it close? I mean, it's close. You know, him and Jokic or whatever. But um, I don't know for some. I don't know for some reason. I I just would rather play Harden today, and I, I literally have no reason for this. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. So I, I'll probably there there are other there are other studs that you can play. We'll talk about Jokic. We'll talk about Jaw. We'll talk about Tatum or whatever it is. But um. Maybe you're right. Maybe you are supposed to play more of this game. I don't know. So, so, so if you're going to play this game, I'd play Halliburton. I would play um, either Harden or Embiid. I probably wouldn't play them both. And uh, you, you could throw in the, uh, the, uh, how do you pronounce the name again? Bal, Bal, whatever, Balthurton, whatever his uh, name was. Matherin. Matherin. Yeah. So I would throw. Him. Yeah. So, so just, just you know, quickly, my thoughts. I, I do think that Matherin's price is sort of caught up to being in sort of a, a fair one over here at, at, at the price he's at. I think on FanDuel at 5,400, he's a really, he's like a really interesting play. I mean, he's just, he's just so active and he's, he's playing the the big minutes and he's also playing the blowout minutes. So it's, I think that you're going to get, you know, you sort of get, you get him in, in both worlds. Um, you're only, even if you get 28 to, you know, 28 minutes ish, he's been at 34, 36 and 40, the first three games. I don't see any reason why it's going to completely stop. Um, I think he's, I think he's just really, really solid. And I think, I mean, you look at Halliburton, he's just kind of exploded every game. As I, as I said, before the year started, I, he was, he was one of my highest ranked players from a, from a fantasy perspective. Um, as long as they try to stay competitive, which they'll do at the beginning of the season. I think he's always a really, really good tournament play, especially on a day like today where he's going to get basically no ownership. So if you wanted to play even him with just one of the guys from Philly, I think that's fine. And I think I think both Harden and Ma- Harden all Harden Maxi and Embiid are all really good plays just on their on their own. And I think Tobias Harris is fine, but I would rather get a stack if I was going to play more than two Phillies, um, which would mean I'd play Halliburton. Then you have sort of this weird roulette that they're playing with the big men in in Indiana. Um, I still think Jalen Smith is a very fair price, fifty five hundred. And I was saying that the other day he got he got hurt unfortunately for me, which cost me uh, cashing in my eight eighty eight that day. Um, mm-hmm. So that was annoying Friday, but on Saturday, the next day, he comes back and he puts up 46 fantasy points. So, in you know, the, the two games he's been healthy, he's put up 30 and 46 and no one wants to play him. I'll take that shot for sure. Um, I think, but some people will talk, you know, Batatze's looks better point per dollar and all this stuff. I think Jalen Smith's being a little bit under projected, to be honest with you here. And uh, one of these, one of these bigs for, for them has done it sort of every day here. So I, I would be willing to take a shot on, on all and gamble on all of them. Uh, Terry Taylor had to have, he hasn't quite gotten there. So maybe he's the one I would kind of leave off, but I, I don't, I even think he has some upside. I, I think for me, the priorities though, if I was going to make a game stack out of it would be uh, Jalen Smith, Halliburton, and then running it back with one of Harden and Embiid, Maxie and Harris. And I think that's that you have a nice little, Hey, if this game stays close and by the way, Philly has lost to everybody so far this season. So yeah, they're probably due for a blowout, but if they don't, if they really are just struggling and, and they were my early pick to best odds to win the title, um because they were the one team that was like the 14 15 to one now they're even worse um i think that they're still like very live for for, for that bet but i as the long as they're struggling I, I think if indiana can keep this game close it's going to be because of halliburton and i think jalen smith is going to be on the court quite a bit tonight so uh i do kind of like those guys and i, I i'm over talking this game because there's going to be some other games that i'm not going to be all that interested in and we'll move past quickly um what is the next one you've got here sheets it's a uh, uh toronto miami and that's what i've got as well um, well, for me, I'll, I'll start with this one, I guess. Uh, Bam is too cheap. Lowry's had some decent games so far and maybe proving that he's not entirely dead. Um, I think that, uh, the, the, the Bam price is probably the, the, the more interesting thing. He hasn't really done anything, uh, that all that great for this price so far this season. And you, you know, I, I think it's just a matter of time. And, and I really think that he's going to be around, close to a 40 fantasy point per game scorer. Again, he's seven K that's too cheap for him. I don't like the matchup for Siakam, although he's just sort of destroyed every game this year. He's probably one of the more underrated players in the league. Um, I mean, underrated in terms of when we talk about stars, he's still considered obviously a really good player. Uh, Scotty Barnes always going to project. Well, I have no problem with him, but I'm, I'm overall not very high on this game outside of maybe playing Bam or Lowry. And then you could always take a shot on hero, but overall, this is not, this is not a game I want to, I want to put a big target on. Yeah, so um, the thing about Bam is he's played 35 minutes a game, which is, I mean, you really can't ask for more than that, right, uh, out of him. And if he's playing the minutes, um, you're, 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 he's supposed to be a good play at 7K unless something has dramatically changed in his game, right? So, so um, one thing I did see in his last three games, that I don't know if this is 
seems like seems like more than he usually has. He had like five or six turnovers a game, and like in, in all three of those games, and that that's that's not that's not usual for him. So um, I'm willing to give him a pass. the The only issue is is that the, the, the position is um, position is a tough one to to play him um, because you could either I mean there are a couple of opportunities to pay up with Jokic and, and Nurkic, or you could pay all the way down for the Houston guy. You know what I mean? So there's 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 ways to there's just really good plays at, at the center position. I guess that, and I'm looking, it doesn't seem like he's going to be particularly low, low owned either, man, because he's pretty cheap. So um, I don't know if I can get to him, uh, but I'm not, I listen, if you're playing him, there's nothing to worry about. I mean, you play 35 minutes, you get the guy that you're supposed to, <laughs> you're supposed to play 35 minutes a game, to continue to play 35 minutes a game with, with a, with a whole, you know, five, six years of, of data that he's better than this. I mean, I'll, I'll give him a shot. Um, yeah. I, and Siakam, I agree with you. I mean, he's he's always looks to be a really good play for me. I mean, he's always he's pretty active. I think he like kind of wins like most improved player like five years in a row or something like that. You know, I, mean, like, <laughs> uh, uh, I, I really I really like I like him in general. But I kind of I kind of think that the game is going to be be sort of a dud. You know, I just think it's going to be a nice it'll be a defensive game, slow game, um, and probably going to be underweight on pretty much everything here. Like I just don't feel as though it's like a Kyle Lowry type of, I don't like playing him anyway. And he's another, he's another year older that, and I don't like playing him a year ago or two years ago or three years ago, you know? So it, it just doesn't seem like a good high upside GPP play, especially in this type of game environment. So if I get to Bam, I'll play him, but I, I actually won't be too happy about it. Um, mm -hmm. I don't really want to play hero. I mean, I really don't want to play much of anything from this game. If you want to know the truth. Yeah, and, and I do want to point out just the one thing about this game that, that could throw things off is if Scotty Barnes is out, I think everybody on Toronto is a good play. <laughs> um, he does. They, he's he's so active for them, and and he got hurt in the in the last game uh, against the same team when they just played they, they just played this game. Um, and but oddly enough, both are in Miami, which I don't really understand. Um, but the, he uh, he got hurt in the last game and he was off to a tremendous start, and then he just uh, so so keep an eye. He's got an ankle. They tend to be careful with guys like this. So just, just keep an eye out for that. If he's out, that does open up everybody. Um, although I still probably don't think I'm getting to Van Fleet at 8,600 against Miami, but everybody else I think I would, would have interest in. And even Van Fleet's fine. All right. Um, what you got next? Uh, Orlando and your Knicks. Why don't you start it off since it's your it's your Knicks here? Yeah. So you guys have been following this for a while. You you probably know what I'm gonna what I'm gonna be talking about this game. And that's going to be a, a no own Cole Anthony playing in Madison Square Garden. Um, so uh, this has been a thing for for uh, for a long time now. I mean, for those of you who are just joining us for the first time, I've known Cole Anthony since he's been in the eighth grade um, playing uh, playing at Archbishop Malloy here in New York. Um, this is what these guys, that's what these kids lo long for. And uh, a couple of times when he's played in Madison Square Garden his first year or two, um, he's had really, really big games. A couple of times he got injured and couldn't play. He's got gets all of his freaking friends coming to coming to these games when he comes back to New York. And he's gonna be, you know, if he's healthy enough to 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 get full go. I, I literally don't care the slightest bit about the projection, whatever it is. Uh I'm I'm gonna be playing him at 6200. Uh, the the other thing is I would also love to to do to, to a similar narrative with 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 Bonchero, but 7800 is rough business. You know, that's like uh yeah. That's really difficult. And I actually saw him play in Madison Square Garden last year when he played for Duke. He like came, they played, they played a game in Madison Square Garden. Madison, like the first game of the year, right? Yeah, yeah. And he played pretty well actually for like 20, 20 points or so. Um other guys from Orlando, uh, if you feel like it, is is uh another low owned uh or they're all low owned because they all project kind of terribly, but but uh Wendell Carter. Um, even Franz Wagner doesn't look like the worst play in the world here. Mm -hmm. Um, the whole the whole game just seems like kind of duddy. So so you know, keep in mind that if you play this, it's not going to be because Saberson gives you any of these lineups. It's not going to be because the projections will. I I just happen to think the Cole Anthony's going to have a big game uh, here. Uh, I don't really have much on the New York side to run it back with or anything like that. It's Jalen Brunson, fair enough, I suppose, at sixty eight hundred. But overall. You know, it'll be probably like a low scoring game. And I'm just kind of, you know, I'm just kind of, uh, you know, this is America. I can play whoever I want. And I'm going to be playing Cole Anthony. I like, I, I'm with you. Um, I, I love the, I love the Cole Anthony play. And 
Um, early on, he actually, the projections kind of like him. The, the projections love Franz Wagner for some reason. And I, I actually love him as a real player. But I think without Anthony, I mean, he's just not going to have with, with with Anthony when Anthony plays like he didn't play the first game of the season. And you just saw every single play, he was the one who handled the ball, tried to initiate the offense. I just don't think with Cole Anthony there, it's going to be the same story. And I think that you're going to see so much usage for Bancaro when they're in their half court that I think it's it's just going to sort of kill a little bit of, of Wagner's upside. He's going to have some games. I just don't think this is the time to play him. I agree that Cole Anthony is the only one I have interest in in a in a serious way from from a. Uh, from Orlando, I, I think you could make an argument for Wendell Carter, but I don't think I'm, I'm particularly, again, strong position. Um, so I, I probably won't do it. And and I and I just feel like everybody on the, on the Knicks is a little bit meh for me. Um, I guess I would say if I had to pick one, it would be Julius Randle because the upside and a good matchup. Um, I think I actually think Julius Randle is an okay play, but overall, this is not the most exciting game for me either. Yeah, just just to further emphasize the point on Cole Anthony, uh, Jalen Suggs is out. So um, that's yeah. uh, that's an actual reason that you can play. <laughs> that yeah, you can play. You're, you're right. And, and as a result, he's going to project probably maybe better than I thought, and maybe he'll get owned a little bit more than I thought. Whatever. I'm, I'm still I'm still I'm still going for this one. Yeah, I agree with. I totally agree with it, with uh, everything you said there. All right. Uh, of the eight Eastern games, which is a we have a lot of them. So the next one you've got here is uh, what you've got uh, Boston Chicago, right? Um, yes. All right. So she's I, I, in this game. Um, I am. I'm trying to figure out if there's anything I really want to do. I think that Brogdon is, is always in play if, as long as he's 4,900. I think uh, they raised Tatum's price. I like Jalen Brown uh, for, he can always put up a 60. He, I mean, we've seen it from him over and over again. He's got, we, it gets treated like he doesn't have upside, but he, he really does. Um, and he can get there a lot of different ways for you. Uh, I can't find anybody on the bulls I want to play, but if I had to play anybody in this game, it would be Brogdon or, uh, Brogdon smart or 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 Jalen Brown but none of them am I particularly excited about I like Tatum um oh. from Boston um I mean he's one of you know he's one of these guys that are up <laughs> that, that are playable you know it's uh uh he's 9900 which is a little bit a little bit scary I suppose um when you have Harden sitting there at 9k I, suppose, I guess that makes mm-hmm. Uh, but I, I guess Tatum's fair enough, and I show him getting ownership less than ten percent. I I don't I can't imagine that. Well, I shouldn't say I can't imagine it being the case. Like I just said, Harden's at nine k, uh, Embiid's at ten five, a pretty similar price and whatever it is. So I don't know. Maybe maybe Tatum will be low owned. I don't know. So so I so I like that. Um, and I, I'm with you with respect to Chicago, um, especially if Levine is back. I, I I can't really see too much to play from that side. Yeah, I'm just taking a quick look on FanDuel because it feels like this is the these are teams that FanDuel tends to price a little funny. So I'm gonna take a just a real quick look and see if there's anything on FanDuel that I would do here. Um I don't think I don't think there is. Uh I think that the the most interesting play if he plays would be Zach Levine at 7,200 because that is probably a little too cheap for him. But uh nothing nothing I want to make a priority on this slate. All right, moving on to the next one. What do we have here? Uh, yeah, Brooklyn. Brooklyn. So we've got. Oh God. Okay. So this is uh this is the this is a game, right? Um. Uh, I I think this is a this you know you what you had a three thirty three total. Uh, two, sorry, two thirty three. It could be a three thirty three total. Um, two thirty three to- total. I I think we've got to start adjusting the way we look at John Morant as especially uh with if Dylan Brooks is again out um which is a question mark right now but john morant is i mean the the ceiling is absolutely tremendous they got smoked by dallas the other night on a back-to-back i'm not going to put any emphasis on that against houston they only played him 31 minutes because it was the front end of the back-to-back and he put up 73 fantasy points the first game 49 49 real life points (laughs) 49 real life points he was unbelievable um he's just got a tremendous ceiling and this i mean you can't really ask for a much better matchup than this so I actually do think that I would rather pay for him than Embiid today, um, Gulp. But I, I'm watching them play. Morant looks as good and as active and as healthy as ever. Embiid looks as slow and as old as ever. Um, so I, I'm into Ja and I'm into to Bain if Brooks is out. Um, I think this is going to be a really high-scoring game, and I think that the total is accurate. I also will have no problem going back to Aldama. Uh, some of these guys average numbers for the season because of the three games because they lost by 40 the other night to Dallas are kind of a little skewed 
And then if, if there's, if there's a type of game for Ben Simmons, this is the type of game you want to play Ben Simmons in. Um, I, I, it's not, it's not exciting. It's not the most fun play in the world, but I certainly could see him getting there. I just, it just, if I, I probably wouldn't do it, but he would be the guy I, I would be the most like, Oh, well, he's going to, he's going to project the best. Let's put it that way. But if he's going to get the ownership that he's early on looking like he's going to get, I'll just pass. And I will play. I, I, if I was playing three lineups tonight, one of them would be a Durant and jaw on the other side lineup, because I think Durant could go completely nuts against this team, just in this kind of a pace. Um, but overall, nobody, nobody on Brooklyn is actually a priority. And it feels kind of odd for a game. It's a three thirty three total. Do you have anybody on Brooklyn or what do you think of this game? Yeah. So here's the guy I want to talk about on Brooklyn. Um, First, let me go to to the Memphis side. Uh, to the Memphis side, and yeah, I mean, John Moran is just as, you know. This, so the only thing I well, I did the whole season was I played him when he scored the seventy six fantasy points at like no ownership. Um, just the rest of the lineups didn't kind of, kind of work out. But I like him, and I like uh, and I like Bain. Not really getting to the uh, to like the top guys on Brooklyn, but but today, um, well, that's not true. I mean, Durant's playable, but. But I think that that Simmons uh, makes some sense here at 6,600, especially small forward eligible. He's my best, you know, well, there's Tim and Vassal is my best, best kind of small forward eligible plays. But I think it's, I think we have to talk about um, not Deron Sharp, but the other guy from the Nets who's, who played like a million minutes the other day. Um, who was this? A Claxton. Okay. Yeah. So, yeah. so Nick Claxton played 34 minutes, um, eight of 11, three of eight from the line, 11 rebounds, four blocks, whatever it is, 44 fantasy points. Uh, so what I did is I pulled this up just now. I just want to see where these minutes kind of came from here, you know? So, so he did, he did start and what they did, it was weird. So, so he played like normal, like the minutes you'd expect. He took him out and they brought him up in for the almost, you know, kind of like a, a, a semi-decent, set of minutes in the first half or maybe like 12 minutes, 14. But then what happened is they, they basically played him almost the whole second half. Like they played him the third quarter. They took him out for a little bit. Oh, this is what happened. So Dayron Sharp came in for him mm -hmm. and then Dayron Sharp disappeared. Um, and so as a, as a result, Nick Claxton played the rest of the game. So I'd like to look into that a little more to see why oh. Dayron Sharp didn't come back in at all. I think um, Aaron Sharp is being overprojected every game. And I think Nick Claxton is actually going to be in the 30 plus minute range a lot this season. Um, that's okay. my personal take. And, and it's, it's because I think they realize Nicholas Claxton is really good. And they actually were in a competitive game. The first game they got smashed right. by, by new Orleans okay. so more minutes out of sharp. So I actually don't think it's an anomaly. I think you're going to see Claxton right around that 30 minute mark. Well, if that's the case, I mean, like if he's going to play 34 minutes, I mean, I almost kind of walk, want to lock him in, you know? <laughs> but, 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 but you, but you can't really, you know, as soon as you get 34 minutes, um, I think even I think 30 minutes, I think it's, right. I think it's fair. I mean, you know what I mean? Yeah. I, 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 um, I'm going to continue to monitor this one today because I think I kind of, if, if I can put a 30 on him, I'm going to play him. <laughs> right. And as I've seen, you get 34 upside. Um, and as a center, I'd have to imagine I mean, I didn't, I didn't really look into it. I have to imagine he's like a point per minute guy, at least as a center. Most yeah. guys are right. Yeah. So, so, so I don't know. I'm not a projection guy, but, but um, it seems to be, he should, he's under projected here at, at what am I seeing? Like 25. I, you know what I mean? Like it just yeah. seems as though he's being under projected. Here, so I, don't know. We'll, I, we'll, I agree we'll with all, I agree that he is being under projected. I agree. I, I do think they're around 30 minutes and, and look, if, if he's playing 30 minutes, this is a guy who's about a one and a quarter fantasy point per minute okay, guy. That's that's already makes him a good play. Yeah. Um, especially in a great game environment. And and I think this is a game that maybe if you're playing both sites, maybe you want to get a little more action on FanDuel because you've got Aldama at 4,400. I would mix in some Brandon Clark at 4K, and I would definitely play Ben Simmons more over there because his skill set, because he's going to get a couple blocks and a couple steals enough of the time here, maybe even more. Um, if he gets, you know, look, he gets he gets three, block, three steals and two blocks, which is completely on the table. It's already 15 uh, fantasy points right there. And all he has to do is just between rebounding and assist, and then the, the, the few points he scores feels like an easy 35 for him on FanDuel. Um, so I think Simmons and Aldama especially stand out as really good players on FanDuel. All right, uh, let's jump over to Boston. Is it you have Boston next or the, no? You, no, sorry, that was my fault. We already did that one. Uh, it's uh, San Antonio, Minnesota. Yeah. Before Wait, I how about that, the Spurs? I, yeah, I have to write this down. I have to update the minutes on my sheets because they're pulling from the wrong data. So I got, I got to fix that. Okay. okay. Um, 
Yeah, how about the Spurs? Yeah, I mean they they just beat Philly in Philly, <laughs> and uh, they won they won in Indiana before that. So uh, they did end up winning that game, right? Yeah, they won it and they came back at the end, but they ended oh. up winning. They're two and one. Even when they try to tank, they can't. I mean, you know, Pop is trying to win games. He doesn't. I I just I just can't get that over that that they're, they're going to try to actually play their worst players thing with Pop as the coach. I mean, you've got guys like Josh Richardson getting lots of minutes here. Uh, all of this to say that I think they're going to play a lot of bodies. I think uh, Vassell is uh, still an awesome play who's going to look like it, his price is probably still too cheap. Um, he's going to be really, really popular. Uh, I don't know if I want to do the Josh Richardson thing. It just feels kind of weird, but I'm open to it. Uh, I would think I would rather take a shot with Zach Collins at, at you know, at 3,400 and, and just say, forget the minutes. If in 20 some odd minutes, Zach Collins can get me, you know, 30 fantasy points. It's sort of a, a Hartenstein type of play from last year. Um, but Vassell and 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 and, and uh, Trey Jones are the guys for me. And on the Minnesota side, I always love Anthony Edwards when he's going to be low owned. I think he might get a little ownership tonight, um, but he'd probably be my favorite. I don't love it's a really high scoring total, and I and one of these guys from Minnesota is always going to get there. Uh, I think you could make a great argument for all all of the uh, all the big ones, but for me, it's probably Edwards or Towns that I would go with. And that's pretty much it. Yeah, I have I have Vassell as one of the top values on the slate, and he's going to get owned as a uh, as a result of that. Um, I have him about thirty percent ownership right now. Um, mm -hmm. And the other guys in San Antonio, you mentioned Trey Jones, and I'll go back to uh, to Keldon Johnson, even though the price doesn't you know getting up there a little bit. I think you know Vassell and Johnson are both are both pretty good. Mm -hmm. um, and then on the Minnesota side, I agree with you. Um, I I prefer. For GPPs, I just prefer Anthony Edwards. You know, I, he always has that big ceiling. And um, they do have, I would say, bodies. I mean, they have scores. You know, they have between Cat and, and Russell. And, and well, Gobert's not really a scorer, but he's going to touch the ball, I guess. Um, yeah, he's, yeah, he's going to score fantasy points for sure. Yeah. Um, you know, it's, 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 uh, I kind of want to play someone from Minnesota if I play multiple San Antonios. Um, I think Edwards seems to be the logical one, you know what I mean, in, in GPPs to play. Um, so I guess that's where I would probably end up going on the Minnesota side is probably Edwards as the, as the top of those options. Yeah, um, I, I, uh, I and it's, I think we're on the same page there. Um, and and it's, it's a game where where if, if if it happens to stay close, you could see some some big potential. So that so the game so far that we've talked about, I think that Indy Philly, I think that. Uh, I think San Antonio, Minnesota, and Brooklyn, Memphis are, are the three that you would look at stacking from the ones we've talked about so far. All right, on to Utah and 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 Houston, and this could be—I mean, what's going on here, Sheets? This is—it's it's almost like the NBA is taking a page out of the uh, NFL's book here. We've got the uh, the, the unstoppable uh, Utah Jazz, who are now three and zero. It's like, does it matter who they have on their team? They just always are going to have one of the best records in the NBA. I don't know what's going on here. And and they've beaten. I mean, they beat. They beat. Uh, they won at New Orleans. First team to beat New Orleans. That's amazing. They won at Minnesota, and they beat Denver at home by twenty one. Like, what? This is amazing. You know, um, I am having a really hard time projecting them, and I and I, I just would say that I, I think all of the projections when it comes to them are pretty flawed. Uh, I, I do think Colin Sexton is going to start seeing more run. I, I I would say I don't understand why, but I, it's hard for me to question a team that's three and zero. Oh. Um, everybody in this game is, is, is in play for me on their side, but I, I find it really hard to, to f figure out what their rotations and how that's going to work. And other than Lori Markkinen, who, who for some reason still can't project well enough, but all he's doing is averaging 47 fantasy points per game this season. Um, and he's going up against a Houston team that doesn't play defense. Uh, I, I love, and on the, on the Houston side. So, so I, I do think you want to try to find the right jazz. And for me, I think that it probably would be. Uh, it probably would be marketing right now, but I think you could, this is a, a very stackable game. I just, just having trouble with the other names from the jazz, knowing who I really want to play. And then on the Houston side, I love Usman Garuba. And I think you're going to just see a game out of Jalen green or Kevin Porter, basically every night. I also, as I mentioned, I was, a, I was a, a day late and a dollar short on the, uh, on my opening night, uh, saying Shangun call. And uh, all he's done since he scored comes, comes back to two nights later, scores 47, He's just not getting the minutes that you'd love to see. And you obviously don't want to play him with Garuba, but uh, I do like Garuba for what it's worth in general. He's a, he's one of the value options that I would really consider today. 
And uh, I believe in, I believe that he's actually going to be more a part of this, this team in general as well, but they just have a lot of good, big bodies though. You've got uh, Tari Eason, who I like another young guy. They just got a lot of young guys and they're going to sort of rotate it, rotate along each, each game. But I, I think that for, for fantasy purposes, as far as fantasy purposes go, I will probably automatically just every day, as long as they're, they're in this price range, play one of Jalen Green and Kevin Porter or Kevin Porter Jr. or El, or Shangun. And then I will mix in the uh, the Usman Garuba uh, value. That's where I'm at here. Yeah. Um, so from a projection perspective uh, on the Utah side, you have Kelly Olenek showing up as the top point per dollar play. I, I just, I just don't, don't think I can do it um, at twenty five percent ownership. I, I just, I just don't, I can't. I um, the, the, the other thing is that you know something to keep in mind about guys like about Laurie Marketing and guys on these what, what you call them tanking teams, whatever. And, and something you got to consider the whole season when you have teams like this, you have guys that play on these teams that they, they, they could. When they're basically on not orders, but when nobody cares whether they win or not, these are like fantasy just gold mines. You know what I mean? Like they just they just just don't care. They just chuck, 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 chuck. And and that's all last season, all those Oklahoma City games were just gold, you know? Mm-hmm. Nobody plays defense and, and they just did a lot of shots off, a lot of layups, a lot of stuff. So guys like Lori Marketing, for example, you know, like he's coming out of situations where he had like he had Zach Levine, like all these other guys over there. And now he's on a team where, you know, no one's expecting anything out of them. He's okay. Just do your thing. You know, he's, he can have games like that from time to time. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm not going to, I don't think I'm going to play him either. Uh, I, I am getting uh, Usman Garuba as well as the top value on his point per hour, top value on the slate, I guess. Um, 3,500 at center. Um and the other Houston guys that I like are Jalen Green and Kevin Porter Jr. And this game, as you mentioned, n- number one, the, the game could blow up. And remember, in the context of the slate, we already talked about, as you mentioned, like other games that that while they look like okay basketball games, they're just kind of like kind of duddy as far as fantasy goes. Um, mm-hmm. uh, I mean, I guess you could say that it's maybe, maybe I o- overestimated that 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 concept. I mean. Brooklyn, Brooklyn, Memphis could deliver more than I probably thought, and obviously San Antonio, Minnesota could deliver, but these first couple of games could be could be zeros, you know. Um, so, uh, yeah, Porter, Green, Garuba. Part of me wants to play Sangoon anyway. Um, mm-hmm. You know, bigger price, much less ownership, coming off the bench, you know, whatever. Uh, he's like you said, he could, he could put up fifty whatever. <laughs> yep, absolutely. Whatever. Whatever. Especially um, in this matchup. Yeah. So um yeah, I guess I guess I guess that's well, it. one thing I didn't highlight is that I didn't notice that the, the why I was trying to figure out why everybody was projecting so well from the guard position for, for Utah. I, I didn't have my I didn't realize my Conley was out was was doubtful tonight. Um okay. which which would put uh Sexton and Clarkson both as really, really strong plays. Active and shooting guys against Houston just tend to go nuts every time, as John Morant just proved the other night. Um, so I, I, I do like this game as a, as a target. And I think that you, you know, I like the Shangun idea. He's also questionable. So keep an eye out for this. Of course, there should be news a little bit earlier, hopefully, uh, knock on wood, but, uh, but yeah, this is, this is a game that, that could really go, could, could go off. There's a lot of games that I feel like could go off tonight. So maybe this is a, a more of a game stacky kind of a night. All right. Uh, Denver and Portland sheets. Why don't you start off with what you like here? Yeah. Um, okay. So. I have Jokic right now as just below, um, given price and everything, like just below Embiid and I guess and 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 Harden. Um, but nobody can guard him, and he can score sixty. And that's uh, you know what, what else can I say? Um, yeah. And when he uh, struggles, by the way, he still gets to sixty usually. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I, I, I'm not quite getting to the other pieces of Denver today. I'm not getting to to Porter or um, or Jamal Murray. The, uh, on Portland, I think what's his name? I think Lillard had a really really strong game in his last game. If I'm not mistaken. Um, look, look, like he was. Oh, well, he scored 40 real life points two games in a row. Um, yeah. But 40 real life points two games in a row. I mean, and, and only scoring five, there. only 55 and 50 fantasy points. Yeah. That's that's not what you want to see. If you want to know the truth. Um, yeah. So I'm probably going to probably going to avoid him I, for whatever reason. I, I don't know. 
why it's like that. What's the total here? Like two thirty or something? It's it's uh two thirty. Yeah. I don't know. I, this feels like an under to me. I mean, I don't know. I I I I, I don't see. I don't see it. <laughs> um. So I I would probably bet the under here if I had to. If I, could figure out how to put my bets up on the screen. I would say, uh, yeah, I'll probably probably bet the under there. And I don't know. I don't want to play Lillard. I don't. I don't want to play Josh Hart. I know. I, I don't want to do it. Um, I don't really want to play Nurkic. I'll probably I probably won't play anybody. I mean, I'll, I could I could definitely make the case for playing Jokic, but I think in the end I'm probably going to end up saving the money and doing something like. Tatum, if I can get Tatum in with like Morant somehow and fade Jokic for that money, I I don't know. I he's boy, maybe that's just silly. I listen. I, we'll we'll see how the the builds work out, but I think I'm going to be under on this game in general. I, I like the idea of the under on the uh, on the score, if nothing else. And I I do it my my one play that I that I really do like because I think he'll be on the court a ton, and they have the old rivalry because there was. Believe it or not, this was actually a discussion in Denver before, is who do we keep, Nurkic or, or Jokic? I remember that. So I think Nurkic is a really interesting tournament play, and I, I I could get on board with that. Now, he hasn't always put up huge games in this spot, but he he does tend to play more minutes, and he tends to have his biggest rebounding games in these in these situations. So if you pencil him in for you know the, the, the double-double that he's probably going to get, uh, you're looking at like a guy who's going to – basically have a floor of around 30 something 35 ish I would say I really think that he's being under projected I think he's got a really good chance at 45 plus fantasy points so I like Nurkic as a as a long shot GPP play and I I think that Lil, the, the thing with Lillard is I think he, I think Lillard is still a better play on on Fandle even with the turnovers and everything because he's 8800 over there and it just sort of like fits in nice and easy uh, it's a little harder for me to get to him on DK um I think Jokic uh, is this is this real this ownership projection on Jokic I have him at 12. Okay, just play Jokic. Then. Look, unless he's – I mean, come on, man. What are we doing? He's, it's, it's a guy who's going to score 55 in every game. He doesn't really have, like, down games and unless they get blown out or something. Like, I think Jokic is just – you just got to start it. Like, that, that should be the start of, like, a normal build to me. I feel like he should be a cash game guy today. And there is enough value out there. To, it's not like he's that much more expensive than all these other guys that we're right. talking about. I mean yeah. – I, I really, I just think that that's way too low for Jokic, and I, I would be very, very high on that play. Um, I and I, like I said, I agree with you about the under. I do like Josh Hart in these kind of games if you do believe in the the overish type of things. But uh, he would probably be my next favorite guy from Portland, or my favorite guy from Portland. And and then look, I'm just gonna I'll, if if I was playing ten lineups, you will always see Michael Porter in at least one or two of them, uh, just because the talent level is so high, and I think that you know six to seven xing this price is not going to be all that difficult for him if he gets it going so i uh i like those plays if i but i wouldn't i wouldn't play he and Jokic together for example i don't think unless you're unless i was fully game stacking and playing like dame on the other side but uh yeah i mean as, as far as priority goes for me i can already tell you i'm going to start start doing my core right now i have no idea if, if Jokic is less than 20 percent owned on this slate I, I just think you just hammer him in especially because there's some other guys who are questionable that which could open up some more value which obviously would make him more popular but 10-9, as long as Jokic is below, even uh, to be honest, if, as long as Jokic is below 12K, I'm probably going to be playing him almost every day. So if I had to play, he, he would be in my half my lineups tonight at least. Uh, that's 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 my biggest takeaway from this game. And I don't care about the over or under for that. I just think he's going to get 60 fantasy points almost all the time here. Or not almost all the time, 55 plus all the time. All right. Um, Sheets, any any sort of anything else? I'm, I'm going to sort of highlight, I guess, before I highlight uh, some of the guys I have, do you have, I mean, I, I have Garuba as the the value obvious play with a play of Garuba and Jokic. And then you could sort of balance out your builds at the cell is the other chalk that I'm interested in. Um, a lot of the other chalk, I don't feel so good about. So I'm, I, you know, kind of a fun GPP type of slate because you have all these guys projecting incredibly well. I, I do like Harden, um, but I don't think it's a must play by any means. I do like, like Harden, Harden, Jokic, Garuba would probably be my starting cash game build. Um, and then I want to, I want to mix in, you know, some, instead of hard, instead of Aruba and some, I'll play some Sangoon. Uh, I love the Porter or Jalen Green idea. I like the idea of trying to see if I can squeeze jaw in. And I am really interested to see what value opens up, which we can touch on at six Eastern when we're live, because that's going to determine a lot of what I want to do. Cause I do like a lot of these spend ups today. I think you're going to see multiple guys in the 60 plus range today. I think the, um, I think the Giants, New York Giants, I think they had more wins in October than the Yankees. 
That's <laughs> <laughs> pretty messed up. <laughs> I'm pretty sure that's pretty messed up. Messed up. All right. Well, we'll, anyway. we'll, be, live at, we'll be live at 60 Eastern. Remember, uh, no, no, no early builds, but you will get my all my, my core plays, and uh, I'll, I'll do all my bets and everything like that, and then I'll be in Discord. Uh, you know, chatting, going back and forth with you guys all night long. So, uh, sheets. Anything else before we get out of here? Uh, no. Let you do it. All right. Good luck to everyone tonight. And uh, yeah, let's make some money. And again, congrats to Sheets on uh, winning a showdown in week seven. Uh, sorry, winning the Survivor in week seven. That's pretty unbelievable. No. <laughs> um, good luck to everybody.